This is Creality K1, a 3D printer that can print whooping 600 millimeters per second. No, I'm not kidding, this is not speed up footage, this is how this printer actually prints. And I'm super glad to say that it not only prints fast, but it also prints in high quality. And before we take a look at the printer itself, let's take a look at some of the prints and the materials that are used for making those prints happen. So we know it prints fast and we know it prints in a really good quality on different filaments but when Creality just released this printer into the market there were tons of complaints about reliability issues and some software issues as well. Now Creality has fixed all those issues and all these problems are gone. I simply didn't get a single problem while printing all these prints and the total print time today when I'm recording this video is 142 hours and as soon as I finish recording this thing goes back to printing because I simply love it, especially for ABS, ASA and all the other prints that needs enclosure. On the left side you see the very first 3D bench that I printed with this printer and on the right side is the very last one that I just printed before making this video. And when I try to find the differences, I actually struggle quite big time because for me they look pretty much identical, meaning 142 hours spent printing at, I don't know, 300 to 600 millimeters per second, didn't do any damage to the printer whatsoever, and this is perfect. It is printer number 7 that I have unboxed from new and started printing with, and this was by far the best experience I ever had. So you have to just only strip it from all these packing materials, you will also get all the needed tools if you are a beginner, if you are not beginner you will probably not use almost any of them except maybe the foot pads and the filament holder, otherwise you just have to plug the cable, remove three little screws, install the door handle, close the door, install the LCD screen and you are ready to print. When you will turn your printer on, it will demand to do the self-calibration or self-inspection thing where it will check all the temperatures, fans, also do the input shaping to eliminate ghosting and automatic bed leveling and so on. Alright, so one weird thing that I found, so I just finished the print job, it's 1 hour 38, there I see, okay, it started cooling down and I say please don't, stay at 250 and bed 
at 100. As you can see, that screen works perfectly. Meanwhile, we're getting out our print, closing the door so it's not pulling down. Put this back in. I'm gonna need this one. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And this is all right. So now it has this stick mark, which is calibration. I don't want any calibration. I just replace the filament, and I'm ready to print. So I'm gonna hit print. And this is what's annoying. As you can see, the temperature from 250 is going down to 180, and I cannot understand why. It will cool down. Later it will warm up, then cool down again and warm up again. Now the temperature reached 180, so the printer starts to move the bed up. I said, do no calibration, right? Right, so it does something like bed leveling. Now the temperature is increasing to 235 and printer is waiting again. So it went from 180 to 235, still waiting for something. We turn the fan on and the fan is on because the temperature is again 180. So this is the only real downside for the time being that I have noticed. When you start the print, it takes few of these cycles of cooling up, heating up, uh, heating up and cooling down. But now we at 180 and I'm pretty sure the printer is doing some self-calibration even though I asked it not to. I don't really mind because actually every single print resulted with really good print quality. I had never had any bad adhesion issues and this will be my print of like number 20 or so. So maybe it's worth spending that extra 5 minutes or whatever it's taking. I don't know. After all these 140 hours of printing, the printer is completely stock and I have not changed on it a single thing. Which things would I consider to change? Probably I would consider taking out this tube like this and sticking it out back like that. Then the only problem you have, it, it will be taller and you need to print a little like a brim, like a frame around here to lift up the lid. If you're printing, of course, something else than PLA. If you're printing PLA, you don't need that cover. You can just leave it open, take it out. This will reduce the friction of the filament going through. And yeah, and it works perfectly. Alternatively, you can actually hang your filament up here above, you know, just make a holder and put it up here. And then it will be feeding wherever the print head is printing. And probably that's about it. I would not change a single thing right now to the printer as it stands. I really like how it is. I like absolutely everything about it. The print bed, it's a fantastic print bed. As you can see, it's been, uh, it's been used now for a fair bit. I absolutely love the idea of having these screws here at the end and the cutouts on the print bed. So print the plate thing. If you need to install it back, you just push it to the end and put it in and it's ideally in the place where it should be. So that's fantastic. Also, if you want to replace this surface with any other surface, you can do that either by cutting out that surface or taking out the two screws, and then you can put any other print surface that you like. It says, please apply glue, and they actually provide a glue stick. I didn't use glue for my first 15 prints, PLA, ABS, ASA, TPU, everything sticks to that bed fantastically well, so you don't need to apply the glue. I started applying glue when I was printing ASA because it really gets stuck to the plate. So in order to actually save the plate, 
and in order to take it off easier I, I would use a little bit of a glue stick as a protective cover rather than something to increase my bed adhesion. I never had any issues with bed adhesion, I never done any manual leveling, it's always automatic, you just press a button, printer automatically does it before every print. And I always have really good first layers, so if we take larger surface prints, you can see there was some shading, but other than that, even on a really large surface prints, the first layer was really good. And this is, by the way, probably almost the maximum size print. I think it's 220 by 220. The bed is 250 by 250. So I could go a bit more on the sides, I assume, but not that much. And in height, this is the maximum. I think it's, it's on the right size. If, and if I had a max, mm, that would be much better. <laughs> on this Eiffel Tower, I had some excessive stringing, so I was playing a lot with different settings, temperatures, retraction, and so on. To be honest, nothing really helped because it's a lot of overhangs and a lot of little standing parts. So this was a tricky print, and despite that, I would say it turned out just great. No supports. The printer prints overhangs really well. There is no problems whatsoever even at that speed. It's actually much better than some of the other fast printers that I tried on my channel because there is a extraction fan at the back of the printer, right there. The cooling fan on the printing head is actually really good. So this works pretty well. And there is uh, another fan right here on the side, which is another powerful Improvement for part cooling if you need a lot of cooling at the same time you can close all the lids close the door and you can print Hello, by the way, you can print filaments like ASA ABS even nylon. So this is super difficult filament to print nylon and Even nylon turns out just great with this printer. That's why I absolutely loved it One more nice touch. This is actually a camera that allows you to monitor your prints online and do through the Wi-Fi and even makes time lapses like this. Right, so I have been 3D printing now for years and I'm used to adjust all of my settings myself, all the speeds, accelerations, everything and so on, layer heights. So I either use Kura or I use Orca Slicer. These are my two favorite slicers. I have already a bunch of different profiles for the Creality K1 and my other printers. But if you are new to 3D, 3D printing, you might actually enjoy the Creality Cloud thing so you it's a little bit like Thingiverse, you can find the models here, you can actually create and upload models yourself which you can sell for some coins and for these coins you can buy other models, some of them are free so you can find them, you can actually download them and you can slice them in the reality. I have done this on my phone, it's the first time I'm doing this on my computer right now, but basically there is a cloud slicer, let's just, let's just skip all these hints. Yes, okay, right. So it will upload you the model. You can adjust all your settings right here. You can slice it and you can send it straight to your printer. And if you go to the workbench, uh, you here is my Creality K1. So I can actually open the webcam, probably. Yep, and I can see what's going on there. And actually I can start printing from here or simply by entering the IP address of the printer you will also see the webcam temperature and you can upload the files and print the files from here which I think it's it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome that you can launch the print from your phone so here's that
This printer right now sells for 540 euros on geekbank.com and I will put the discount code in the description below. And if your question is, would I recommend this printer for someone, maybe a beginner? Definitely yes, this is the super easy to start printer. It prints super fast and super high quality. And at least for now, it's been really reliable after all the upgrades that I assume Creality made, because otherwise it should have probably broken down like for the others after 30 hours or so of printing. So here we have it. I hope you found it useful and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.